I designed and 3D printed this infinity cube and today I'm going to show you everything you need to make one yourself. I reckon infinity cubes and infinity mirrors are awesome and I've wanted to make one for ages. Problem was I could never find any that I could completely 3D print so I designed my own. The way we get these infinite reflections comes from this stuff here and this is called mylar sometimes, often sold as energy saving window tint. It reflects most of the light but lets a little bit through so the result is when you illuminate from the inside the light shines back and forth with a little bit escaping and you have the multiple reflections going all the way to infinity. To make one of these we're going to need four things. The first thing are NeoPixels and these are digital addressable RGB LEDs. Basically what that means is you can animate them and have them fade between different colors independently. If you didn't want to use these, there's nothing to stop you from using regular off-the-shelf strips of LEDs. If you are using the NeoPixels, you're going to need an Arduino. And I chose to use an Arduino Uno because it's the cheapest and simplest of the lot. Next, we need something clear and I chose to use acrylic. You could also use glass. It should be 3 mils or 1 eighth of an inch thick at the most. And the size you're aiming for is about 100 to 101 millimeters squared. Finally, our two-way mirror film, sometimes known as mylar. Generally, this comes in big rolls and the idea is to peel it off and to apply it to your windows. Now, some of these things when making this video, I picked up from my local hardware store. You might want to do the same, but if you can't get it that way, I've got links to everything you need in the description. Let's start by looking at the design I've made and go over the three printed parts that you need to make. Here is the completed design in Onshape. Let me talk you through the parts one by one. We print four of these posts and they're all identical and you can see they have a slot where the acrylic or glass is held in place. On top of that are an upper and lower end piece and they're identical. They also have slots down the bottom to maintain the acrylic or glass in the correct position. On either end they have little corner cutouts where the top and bottom pieces of acrylic sit. We can see that there's matching holes in the corners that line up with the corner post and we're going to put an M3 bolt down here to hold everything together. On top of the cube we have a small cap piece. It's got a cut out in the center so we can see through the mirror and once again it has the matching bolt holes. You'll see there's just enough clearance for the 3mm piece of acrylic to be clamped underneath this. Underneath we have an electronics housing and you can see it has a solid top apart from a hole in the center. It's also got a little cutout where you can fit through a three wire DuPont connector from the LEDs. The cavity in the bottom is 20 mils deep and that should have enough room for your Uno or a battery pack or however else you're going to run this thing. Finally, we have a lower cap piece and this is designed to bolt onto the electronics housing and contain the electronics. You can find the link for all of these STLs in the description and they'll all be orientated for easy printing. Now the beauty of this design is I've made it so that it needs a small printer, you don't need to have any support or anything like that, and you can print it in regular PLA. Next up, we need to prepare six acrylic squares and then apply our two-way mirror film. Your acrylic will likely come in a big sheet and need cutting down into six identical squares. The size that you're aiming for can be anywhere from 100 to 102 millimeters and fit effectively inside the parts that I've designed. Now table saws can be quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, so if this option is no good for you, you might be able to do this in glass and have your glazier cut the squares for you in the required size. As for the application of the mirror film, I'm going to defer to the expert because I was not very good at this at all. You'll find linked in the description a video from someone who does this for a living and they'll take you through an easy way to get everything mounted bubble free and high quality. We're making great progress, so let's keep that going by preparing our NeoPixels and doing some work in Arduino. Your NeoPixels will likely come in a longer roll, so our job is to cut them down and wire them up. We need to understand that there's only three wires. We have data in, five volts, and ground. And on the output side, it's data out, five volts, and ground. Note the arrow telling you the direction for the input through to the output. Also note that after you've cut the strip, you can solder them back together to rejoin them and they'll work just the same. On the input side, we're going to be adding three wires into a DuPont connector that's going to plug into the Arduino. But before we do that, we need to take our strip, wrap it around the printed part to work out how long the top and bottom sections need to be. Mine was 23 for the top and 23 for the bottom, so I cut these two sections off. After that, I got some white wire so it would blend in, and I carefully matched up ground, 5 volts, 
and matched up the data out from the bottom to the data in from the top. Obviously the length of the white wire shown on the left matches the length of the post that we 3D printed earlier. On the right you can see that I've soldered on three wires that are going to plug into the Arduino Uno. It's time to hit the Arduino IDE to write our code. So this sketch is one that's built into the NeoPixel library and to get that library we need to come to sketch, include library, manage libraries. Now we type in NeoPixel up the top. The one we want is Adafruit NeoPixel by Adafruit and you will have an install button here if you haven't installed this already. After you've installed it you're going to come up to file Examples, scroll down until we find Adafruit NeoPixel, and the one we're using is called Strand Test. I found this awesome Uno pin diagram by Googling, and it's linked in the description. And what we're looking for are three pins in a row that have ground, 5 volts, and an input output pin. We can actually find this if we use the ICSP header down the bottom in the middle. In between ground and 5 volts, we can see we have access to pin 11. So with that knowledge in hand, we can now define our data pin. So instead of pin 6 by default, I'm going to change mine to pin 11. You can change yours to whatever pin you want to use on whatever Arduino board that you're using. There's not much else to do, so we're going to scroll down and set our amount of LEDs. I had 46, that's 23 plus 23, all in series. Once again, if yours is different, count it and put the number there. Now this is basically a demo piece of code that shows all the different animations built into the library. I always have good success however by deleting all of them except one, and that is the rainbow. You have two options here, you can either highlight and delete everything inside the loop except that, or if you think you might want to use it later, simply add comments to the start of all the lines apart from rainbow with 20 in brackets. Now this 20 is the speed in which the animation happens, so if you want it faster or slower, try experimenting by changing this number. To get what I've showed you in this video, that's all you have to do. So you're ready to set your port, set it to Arduino Uno, and then upload to the board. All right, we have everything we need to build one of these. So let's go through the assembly step by step. We're gonna start by gluing the top LED strip down in place. So I have my piece of mirror tile and then I lay down a bit of cut up plastic sleeve to stop the glue from getting on it. Now I can take one of my end pieces and slot it into position and prepare the LEDs. These are the top lights and these wires go down to the bottom LEDs. In each edge and the center for each side, I put a small piece of hot glue and then I carefully put it into position, trying to keep everything straight and aligned. You want to make sure you keep on pushing the strip so it's flat and you don't have any lumps that are going to reflect the light in the wrong direction. You won't need much hot glue here and putting on too much just increases the risk of it bubbling out the side and marking the mirror tile. Take your time and carefully work your way around each of the four sides until you get back to the start. Hopefully everything lines up nicely for you and you can remove the protective piece of plastic sheet. I'm very happy with mine so far, so it's time to add one of the corner posts and extend the wiring up to the top. The first step in achieving this is putting the mirror tile into the subtle little slot for the end where you've just glued on the LEDs. After that, you're going to take the top cap, put it into position, and then insert two or three bolts to keep everything correctly aligned. Now for the corner where the wires go down to the other set of LEDs, we're going to take one of the corner posts and tighten the M3 bolt, pulling it into position you'll need a minimum of M3 by 20 to reach through into this corner post. Once it's been pulled flush, you can turn it around and lay it upside down on the table, ready to proceed. Now is a good time to use some IPA and a microfiber cloth to polish off any fingerprints because they're gonna be trapped on the inside from this point onwards. Take your freshly cleaned mirror tile and slide it down the channel of the post until it slots into position in the end piece. Now you can take the next corner, slide that down and tighten the screw in that corner to lock it into place as well. We're going to repeat this process as we work our way around the cube, sliding in a piece of mirror tile and then sliding in the corner next to it before doing the bolt underneath. When you finally get around to the last side, you'll have to slide two mirror tiles in in a row before sliding in the final corner piece. Tighten this up from underneath and most of your assembly is now complete. If you added any fingerprints, clean them now before the whole cube gets sealed up for good. At this point, I wanted a little preview, so I found this blue light. I put it on the last piece of mirror tile, turned the whole thing the right way around and put it over the top. As you can see, the effect was already awesome and this is an alternate way to do this if you don't want to use NeoPixels. Take your other end piece, thread the LED strip through the middle of it 
and then make sure it's facing the right direction before you push it down and try and align it with the tops of all the mirror tiles that should be just poking out a little bit. Time to hot glue the other side of our LEDs in place. Line it up with the corner and then follow the same process as before where we put a dab of glue on each end as well as the center for each side of the box. Hopefully after you've worked your way the whole way around the box, you'll find that the last strip lines up beautifully to have the wiring in the corner that's gonna plug into the Uno. You can take your last mirror tile, pull the cord out of the way and it should slot into its holder and just have a tiniest little bit down the side for the cords to fit through to go to the cavity underneath for the electronics. If you're having trouble here, use a file and grind a little channel. Now we can take the lower electronics housing and carefully align the DuPont connector and it should just slot through to come through into the bottom cavity. Like you did before, insert two M3 by 20 length at minimum screws into the four corners, but don't go too fast if you're using a drill like me, otherwise you could risk melting the plastic. A final hand tighten and then you're ready to flip it over and see that it's looking pretty good already. It's now time to grab our Uno and plug in our three pin connector into the port that we identified earlier in the wiring diagram. Find a neat way to run your cable and then notice the slot on the lower lid and line it up with the cord before you install four M16 or shorter bolts to hold this cap in place. These are designed to drive just below the surface of the base so you don't scratch your table. Flip it over and get ready to add some power to your Uno. How spectacular is that? It's so satisfying to have finished this and to look inside and see the pattern reflecting all the way to infinity. Now these already look very cool just as an empty infinity cube, but as you can see, I've actually got a 3D printed logo inside here, and that's the logo of my F1 in schools team competing in the national finals next week. If you want this effect, fortunately, there's only one or two more easy steps to accomplish it. If you take back off the bottom cap, you'll notice a hole that will align a three mil drill bit so you can drill in the very center of the mirror tile. Once the hole is drilled, you can unbolt the electronics cover and you can see I've inserted a long M3 bolt through with a rubber washer and a lock nut to hold it in place. And now I have the 3D printed logo for Thrust Spectre and it too has a 2.5 millimeter hole on the bottom, which means when I twist it on, the thread will be cut with the M3, it's mounted and ready to go. Now it's simply a matter of reassembling everything exactly like we did before. There's only one alteration that I made and that was to add a little bit of tape over the bolt to prevent it having any chance of touching the metal pins of the Uno and shorting them. We can screw back on the bottom cap and check our new results. All I've got to say is wow, from any angle when you look in, the logo is repeated off into infinity. It looks really cool from the side, from an angle and even cooler when you look from above. This should be a hit at F1 in schools. That's it, all done. I'm really happy with mine and hopefully if you follow this guide, you'll be happy with yours too. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And until next time, thanks for watching and happy gazing into infinity. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.